Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Try Out Tuesday. And I had just did that thing where I'm like, it really is Tuesday, isn't it? You know, when you know you're not sure. So there we are. <coughs> it's going to be great. Okay, so this evening we are going to be making a card. I'm going to be using the Dancing Daisy. And I've also got the Journaling Essentials 2. And... A big one's Fern Flourish and an Inkables Mandala. And I thought we'll have a play with these goody goodies and see what we come up with. Yeah? Good idea. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah. All right. The only thing I didn't get ready off the shelf was my blending brushes. So I'll just get those now. Hello, Alison. How are you, my darling? Okay. Yes, yeah, so I thought I haven't done a card in a while. Um, on a try out Tuesday anyway so I thought well, we'll make a little card card so I've grabbed some distressings just the ones that I, I won't lie that were next to my desk already when I say next to my desk all of my distressings are next to my desk but they were just that extra three inches closer that meant they were easy to pick yeah I know I heard it all right <laughs> hello pal hello everyone else so I'll just wait for a few more to join in and then we will get started. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna share the live because I asked you to do it, so I definitely should. Hello Kim, thank you for finding me. Didn't know I was lost, but you know still i'll take it i absolutely will hello maggie okay so has everybody been keeping track of the january savers you know new offers every day through january and obviously we're only what are we just over a week away till the end of the month so you know we're, we're, we're getting into the last week now you know it's the 175th day of january January can be like that though, can't it? It just can. All right, so basically I've done a 40, it's about 14 by 14 centimetre panel here. Well, basically it's from a 6x6 six six card and I've taken a centimetre off each side to make a layer to go onto a 6x6 six six card. Like so. Okay. Um, I very rarely, I don't say never because that's how things turn around and bite you in the backside. I very rarely stamp directly on the front of a card because it, I just go wrong a lot, basically. And it's just easier to manoeuvre, I think, a panel. I don't know why I had to do that to prove it's easier to manoeuvre. But there we go. Right, I'm going to crack on. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay some colour down on here and just have a bit of fun with it okay so i've got the fern flourish inkable's big one and i think we're just gonna work hmm do i do it sort of on a i'm tempted to do it sort of like on a jaunty sort of angular there that could be quite nice and do you know what i'm gonna do and i know i don't normally do this I'm actually going to tape it down so it doesn't move. All right. I know. It's like a whole new thing in it. Because that way, I'm thinking if I do that across there, got a little bit of space here. I'm just something to play with. I won't pretend there's a bigger plan than what I've just done. Because, you know, there isn't. We all know there isn't. Okay. So I'll tell you what I am going to do. I am just going to run that tape, some stencil tape, along that edge to try and keep that edge a bit cleaner. All right. So I think on here I'm going to go with my picked raspberry. Um, do you know what? I'm probably going to go with all three of these. Let's get all those out. We'll go in. Do you know what? We'll go in with some mustard seed first. And I'm just going to do that in a couple of different spots over my template. We're not going to overthink it, okay? Because there is no need to overthink it. 
Okay, and then we're going to go with some picked raspberry. I want to do something bright. Something bright and... Basically, not gloomy. And then I'm going to grab some villainous potion. I'm going to go in over these. And this is where I will say, if you are not confident in your blending, you don't think you're particularly good at it, going through your inkables, it actually doesn't matter. Like, it really doesn't matter. Because, I'm just going to go back in with some of that mustard seed. Um, <clears throat> and this is just to add more ink to it, to be honest. It's not because, for any other reason. Because when you lift it off, it doesn't matter. It's still... absolutely stunning even if say the brush pattern wasn't perfect or do you know what i mean still beautiful okay now what we're gonna do and i'm and, and i really want this to work but i don't know if it's gonna i'm gonna take my mister i'm actually going to go to the side a sec I'm going to get my, template, my stencil tape that we were just using. And we're going to go across the other way. Okay, and then I'm just going to get a scrap piece of paper to go here, just to make sure. Okay, and I'm going to mist, mist spritz. Across here, then my minimist is going to fall on the floor. And then we're going to put onto there and press that down. Then lift up. Then we've sort of got both sides, okay? And of course you could do that tech, both techniques pretty much fully all over your card. It's just fun, just a little change in texture. Okay. Straighten that up. I'm going to give my blending mat just a little wipe off there. Thank you, Alison, for doing links. I don't know where Sammy is. <clears throat> okay, so then, but and the thing is with this, okay, you look at that, you could layer up a couple of stamps on there, a sentiment, and you don't have to do a lot more if you don't want to. Do you know what I mean? The, 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 the inkable big one there has done so much of the work for you. In fairness, even just a sentiment. You know, if you don't have a lot of stamps or say, say, oh dear, say stencils and templates are more your thing anyway. You know, because you, you can see how much work they do for you with just a few different inks, you're away. Okay, so I'm now going to potentially regret things and I'm going to take this mandala and i'm going to work across this side i had actually planned to work on the right but because not a lot of the ink came off down here i am actually going to work on the left and sometimes accidents like this can be great because it alters your plan um and make and, and a lot of the times you come up with an even better result than you were you know prepared for in the first place so i actually kind of like it um when things don't go to plan because i've never disliked something because it didn't go to plan do you know what i mean it's usually created something better out of it okay so i'm going to, again i'm going to go in with the same colors i'm just building up some layers now 
and then I probably won't use the villainous potion because I want to keep it brighter. Okay. Now obviously this is a much finer inkable. The pattern is much finer. I'm just going to work that ink into that brush before I start going over. I don't want any harsh lines. I'm just going to put a little bit of the picked raspberry closer to the edge. I just think it needs it. And then you've got, you can just see you've got the different details being picked out here. So it's sort of like lots of layers, yet yeah, there's no layers, which is awesome. Okay, now whilst we're working with the ink on the mat, we're going to colour our dancing daisy, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple of the colours onto my blending mat here. Now, and here's the thing. So I've used a really two very full patterned inkables here, okay? But don't think for one minute I'm not going to knock that back and put it to the back. This is the thing. They can really be the feature, but don't be afraid of using them and then pushing them backwards again, okay? So, we are going to do some painting. You'll never guess what I found. I found my mini paintbrush. I was looking for. It was exactly where I thought it was. Which kind of makes no sense. But anyway. Okay, so we're going to go straight in. With some yellow. With the mustard seed. But we're going to bring in a little bit of that pink. Just to mix up the inside. Okay. And then... I'm going to use the Villainous Potion on here, actually. I'll tell you what, we'll go to the stem first. I'm just going to work my way down. This is just stamped on the same sort of card. You can see it's not necessarily a particularly good painting card. But that's all right. I have um, heat embossed. Um this but that i've stamped with my versifying claire i just heat emboss um with clear powder for two reasons um one it's really easy when you're painting over them because unless you're using something like um your ink tents or you're barely using any water with your oxides it just you know the line just always comes to the top and also you I, you know your versifying claire does stay wet for a little while um and I'm always smudging it. So basically that's what internet's playing off a bit. Is that storm is that Jocelyn? Storm Jocelyn. Minx that she is. Okay. So I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna put some villainous potion on the end of all these petals. Okay. And then what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the mustard seed and put it in the middle of the petals. Before we go on to the pink raspberry pink in here. And what I love about this daisy is you can really sort of play with the colors you can mix them up, they don't have to look real. You know, you can really just have a real sort of fun play with them. And then I'm gonna go back to our mustard seed here. And I'm just gonna go over into both colors. Just to blend them together a little bit, okay. Like I say, you can really have some some fun with the with the dancing daisy. 
But I think I find that with a lot of the dude lar, even things like the ladybird, which you would say is obviously a red colour. Um, the creative team and, and I've, I've had some real fun mixing it up using different colours on them and even paper piecing them, um, which is pretty awesome. Right, and then I'm going to get some more of my peach raspberry. I'm just going to go around and fill in any little gaps I see on the edges. Okay. Hello, Shaz! Okay, just any little gaps. They're going to be picked raspberry gaps. All right. And this is sometimes what I'll even prep. All right. So Shaz can't see anything. Can everyone else see me? Um, this is why sometimes I'll prep and then but do the painting once I'm doing my background so that I know that the colours will match. All right. So I'm just going to leave that to the side. Leave that as well to the side in case we need those colours again. You know, I'm not going to clean that off again now until I know for a fact I'm not going to need those colours. If you see now, that sort of, it goes with. All right. Okay. Everything's okay there. Absolutely marvellous. Absolutely marvellous. Okay, so now we're going to add a little bit more to the background. We're going to really build on it even more. We're going to and we're going to bring in some of this green that we have used on the stem of this. And I'm going to be using the two branches from the Journaling Essentials number two. Now these are really well named stamps. I can't lie, I'm rubbish at naming stamps, and I very often ask our creative team, "What do I call this?" Okay, but. Um, journaling Essentials too. I'm really tough with the Journaling Essentials because they really are. I think if you are building patterns, if you're, I mean, I know they say Journaling Essentials, but even for card making, things like that, these are so good. They're great to fussy cut, uh, cut, out, ooh, cut out, build layers, build the stamps. And if you feel like you're putting something on and it just needs a bit more interest, adding these in when they've been fussy, fussy cut out are absolutely brilliant. If you saw last week when I was attempting um a different sort of journaling style for me that's what i did okay so i'm going to go straight in with some villainous potion branches okay again i keep leaning to the right don't i and i'm not i'm going to the left so so you can see now the difference between when you're using your blending brushes or tools with your inks to the stamping it's a very different tone okay these are a much darker much richer tone than when you're either painting or blending with them okay and then i'm going to go in like i said i'm going to start bringing in that rustic wilderness Because I think we just need to put some of that green in. Now, I didn't want it too weighty in terms of the blended background. But I do want it to be there when this flower goes on. Okay. I'm actually going to put a little bit more just coming out into the top here all right so you can see now that green is really starting to work and as daft as it sounds as you look now by adding more it's allowing that flower to stand out more do you see what i mean as you as we've added more to it it's actually making it better to see the flower and this is the thing and this is where i go to the if you don't like it, keep going. Keep going until you like it. Don't think you've done too much. You can just keep adding until you've decided it's done. All right. So I'm going to go in again with this small, with this sort of rounded leaf one. I'm going to do that coming out the top there. And then again, coming out here. Okay, 
And this is why when we started making stamps, things like this here are exactly why we went with clear. Now, when I say exactly like this reason here, not exactly in a way because, um, but it was primarily for card making because I very much, when I'm making cards, even if I have a perfect plan, which yes, okay, don't laugh, but say I did have a perfect plan, okay, that it, I still get to the end and go, I should have put something there. You know, I'll do all this creating, I'll go, I should have put something there. So I need to be able to see exactly where I'm going to put it, okay? So that is why. All right, now I'm going to go back to our Dancing Daisy stamp set here because I'm going to use this here, okay? This lovely border here. Now these are very simple borders, okay? But that's a brilliant thing. It makes them ever so usable. Um, yeah, Sam has to tell me what the wind is like because my craft room is, uh, uh, is basically a cupboard in the middle of the house. So I say that as if my house is enormous. <laughs> it's not. Um, it's a two-bed mid-terrace. Do you know what I mean? It, it literally can't be. Anywho, oversharing. Um, so, for example, if I'm in here working during the day, um, I send Sam a message. And let's like, say I've put washing out. Sam, can you give me a ring if it starts raining? Because I won't notice. <laughs> so, right. So I'm going to ink that up with the Versafine Black because our stamped elements are in black. So we need to start bringing that in. Okay, and I'm going to put this across that border we created. In all honesty, to highlight it. Because, you know, I, I, I want it noticed. I'll put effort into that, you know. Right, so let me just add that on there. And then we're actually going to go all the way around the outside. So you will have seen, if you've been here before, okay, you will have seen me do my rough line around the outside with my micron pen. What if you're not confident doing that? What if you're like, no, I can't do that. I'll, I'll, I'll go wrong. Okay. But you still like the effect. Well, these borders here are a great way of doing that. Because not only have you got this one with the extra ziggy zaggy bits, but you've also got one that's just the three roughly drawn lines. So you don't have to worry about adding those in freehand if you don't feel confident doing that. Okay. You can just basically use mine. That's why they're here. But again, you can add to them. We we know, and we don't really get it, but we know there's lots of stamp companies um, out there that are like, oh no, how our stamp is is how it's got to be used. You're not allowed to budget or budget or anything like that. Definitely not the way we work. Add to it. Use it as a starting point. That's absolutely brilliant. We are trying to kickstart your creativity here, which is why, for example, our collage papers are called catalyst papers. It's supposed to be a catalyst to get your creativity going. That's what we're after all the time. Okay. So how are we looking now? Ah, you see it's looking starting to look. We're getting there. We're definitely, definitely getting there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in. I've got to add in some white details with my Posca. All right. So first things first. Now, again, if you need inspiration for these, they are on the backing card of your Dancing Daisy. Okay, you don't have to. Um, we're not. Although we're saying we love to you to add stuff, we're not saying you have to if you don't want to. You can copy what we're doing absolutely right down to every single dot i add that's not a problem at all because making something is the best way to spark your creativity it's why i make so many tags I, st I, st I still make tags a lot if i'm struggling i make tags but i will say the bee crafty deck is a great thing if you are Looking for a way to kickstart your creativity this year? Have a go at the Bee Crafty deck. 
2024 pop on over to the group you'll find so much inspiration the beecraft stamps group on facebook there is an album full of beautifully altered playing cards you can follow the prompts you cannot follow the prompts we're pretty easy breezy we don't mind we just want you to get involved Okay, and just those little white dots. Transformative. Transformative. So we're going to go in here. And add some here too. Okay, I'm going to go. Now, because the oxide ink is wet, your Posca, in, here it's watered down, so it's not so much, but where it's been stamped, and obviously it's the full intensity of the ink, you will find your Posca, because it's a water-activated ink, it will lift some of the colour. Okay, so if you wanted to stick a clear embossing over that so it didn't happen, or, you know, really give it a good old heat set as well, that would do it. But in all honesty, I don't mind it. Because if nothing else, it does tone the dots quite nicely. Okay, you can put some in the middle of your borders, around here. You know, that can be quite fun. Put some in the middle of where we've been blending. And just have fun with it. You know, we're not trying to... You know, quick cards are great. But you don't have to churn out as many as you can when you're making you can just have a have a nice time doing some more dots you know if if, if this is your hobby and you're having fun doing it you know it's not like you need to get your craft stuff out and make 36 cards every time you do it because, in all honesty, that does not sound like fun. Whereas, see doing these white dots? So much fun. Okay. I've just got to finish this bit, this flourish now. Because otherwise it'll drive me wild. Well, not wild. I'll be very ever so mildly frustrated the next time I look at it. It's not quite wild, is it? Okay. Of course, another way. See, another way dots cute. Adorbs. Okay. Another way you could also gain some of that back if you're thinking, do you know what? I've overdone it. Okay. Another way I might do that is I will take something with a small pattern. So either the dots from your dinka balls okay or like i said these little stars here i wouldn't necessarily put a lot on but i'll get my grip paste okay i was grip pasting earlier so let me go, grab that one okay get your grip paste all right well it was a bit intense it was a bit intense over here for example i'm gonna put Few little stars on. Do you know what? Actually, I like them. I'm going to put some more down here too. Okay. And then you've brought a little bit of the white back because they're a lovely small thing. They're not invasive onto the card. And I think as well, I've, I've said this before when people say, "Oh, you know, what sort of crafting do you do? Do you do card making or whatever?" I am an as that paper crafter. If you make it with paper, I'll do it. It's card making, it's ATCs, it's um, journaling, it's, you know, even altered MDF in a way, because I use paper to do that. Um, I very rarely don't use paper on an MDF project. Tags, anything like that. And I do think there is still this, 
Well, I can't really use texture paper. It's for, it's for a card. It's not for a 3D project or an art journal page. Absolutely not. I won't have it. All right. So this now needs a sentiment. Now, on, in my opinion, I have also got... Sorry, I'm, I'm starting to go off on a tangent. I did also have some of the circles from our journaling essentials cut out, ready to go. Do you know what I mean? If you still felt it needed something else white added back in, you could do those. But I'm not going to do those right yet. I'm, I still might. I still might. These are some sentiments. So on your Dude Like Dancing Daisy, there are your four words where you've got live, simply, bloom, wildly. Now, so you can use them separately. You can use them together. It's really, really, really very up to you. But I think I might go for some small words. I can't lie, I'm having so much fun. Like, I really am having so much fun. <clears throat> I get very caught up with my journals and I forget how much I like making cards. But that's what I'm like though, isn't it? You, you know what it's like, you'll come to me several several lives in a row and i'm still using the same colors especially if it's a new thing um i do believe it's what they call hyper focus but there we go so i'm going to go for my small words and we i'm actually going to go for a longer one i think we're going to go with think you can and you can think you can and you can i don't think that's one i use a lot i am um, uh, i do all the time i can't lie use the imagine something wonderful i just love it and i think it's a really good sentiment if you don't know who the card's going to be for yet you know it's a good sort of could be for anyone sort of gig sorry i'm just going to put a couple of bits away because i'm I keep getting new things out and nothing's going away, is it? All right, so I'm just going to ink up. Now, this might not stamp that great because I know I've got texture paste in it, but, you know. But that's, you know. I think you can and you can, yeah. A bit too texture pasty at the end. Bear with, I'm going to try and clean it properly. Needs like a little toothbrush on it. Let's get the texture paste out. Oh, hang on. I think I got it. Let's try again. So, I think you can. I'll just put it here. Yeah, but then I was rubbish stamping. God, can't get the stuff. think you can and you can there we go right now like i was saying earlier i have a tendency to smudge in my hand so i have got quite into the habit of using just some clear embossing powder on my this fine clear stamping oh did you see him put the lid on there before I put the excess in? All right, and then we're going to heaty heaty. You can also, to be fair, if you want to, sorry, I'm just, I'm just quickly heat embossed those ones as well, so I don't want my hands on. Um, use your um, embossing glazes to give a similar sort. Of, you know, if you were doing this really just in one side of the color wheel with your distress, for example, in your blues and greens, that sort of thing, you could even stamping with your Verse Fine Claire, go over it with, for example, one of your embossing glazes, which would not only seal it but it would also give it that tint. Um, of whichever distress colour you were using. So that would look quite good. 
and that grit paste is nearly dry. That's what I love about grit paste. It's light enough to go onto cards. It dries really quickly. It's just a dream, really. <clears throat> oh, and somebody in Sam's live last week in Crafting Together was saying, what's the difference between grit paste and texture paste? So I'll just go through that now for anyone that wasn't here. Um, so grit paste is gritty. Okay. And texture paste is smooth unless it says otherwise. So the way I put it was, it's the difference between toothpaste and wall filler. You know, like some wall, coarse wall filler. That's the difference. But grit paste is much lighter than that. I can say that because I used to use wall filler as texture paste. But it's a bit too heavy to go onto cards okay so we're really getting here with this i'm just going to give it a quick waft with my heat tool just to make sure everything's dry because the Distress grit paste, you are actually allowed to heat. Like, I'm not saying you're... Oh, it's not me just saying it. You are actually allowed to heat. The manufacturers say you're allowed to heat it. Oh. Leading edge is that one. Okay. So, I've got... Ooh, some foam here I'm going to use. But of course, you could just stick this flat directly on. We can layer it up. So, I think this is the thing. Although we've made this completed card, obviously tonight, we've gone through other things like how you know if you do say you did need a card in a hurry, using one of your inkables, big ones, few colours, you're absolutely away because they really do just give such a beautiful result. It is actually on the plan, <laughs> I have so many plans, um, for us to do short videos on each of our templates showing you what they look like when they're blended through. Because I do think that's actually really helpful. Um, when, for example, if you're picking new templates. Is that about right? A little bit to the left, isn't it? Okay, so then we've got our base on. Beautiful. Okay, and then we're going to take our flower. And put these on. I'm not going to cut that in half because I do have some smaller foam that I can just put on the leaves. Which I can't like. I've, I'd, I used to use little foams all the time, but what a pain in the butt. But they are really good for obviously little bits. The smaller areas. All right. So the reason this is going on after the panel is because it slightly overhangs, and we don't judge for overhang around here. So if that's your bag, no, we don't judge no overhang. Okay, and then again. I'll use some 3D foam. I did actually mean to do some sort of, you know, paint flicky flicking. But I don't think it needs it. I don't think it's really in need of that. Put that just 
just inside the border there. I don't know if it's missing something, but I think I need to leave it for a little while before I decide. Okay. So this, that was fun. I'm not going to lie. I really, really enjoyed it. I have put my flower in a little bit too far left, but it's fine. Um, but it is just a real example of, you know, you can just keep adding, as daft as it sounds, to make something more visible. Okay? Now, thank you so much for joining me. I am going to... I am? I am going to head off. I'm... From what Sam's saying, the wind is really picking up, and I know a few of you are, are losing me or have already lost me. Um, so, you know... Stay safe, look after yourselves. Um, but also, please have a go. Have a go at really chucking loads of loads of ink at it. Um, because it's fun. See, it's fun. Because I did it and it was fun. Um, um, but if you are struggling with your mojo, do have a go at the Be Crafty deck. You've got to have a pack of cards lying around somewhere that no one's played with. Um, so have a go at that. Um, and I'm also in Crafting Together with All Brands on Thursday, provided we haven't all blown away. So I would love to see you there. But you can catch up with all of our videos on the Be Crafty YouTube channel. So make sure you go over there and click subscribe because we need you to subscribe, basically. <laughs> all right then, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye bye.